Yes, ladies and gentlemen, how are you? Welcome to our today's uh, portfolio management uh, class. Portfolio management is found under CIFA, CIFA, which is quite a reputable course. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I want to use this very short clip to teach you how to compute holding, 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 period, return, holding period return, HPR, holding period return, HPR. And I would want us to look at a situation where you have uh, bought a share. So you buy a share, the buying price, the buying price of this share is eight shillings, one share. And then at the end of the day, you sell it, you sell this share, you sell the share, the selling price is 12, 12, 12, after say a year. After one year, you are able to sell the share that you bought one year ago for 12 shillings. And then ladies and gentlemen, you are required here to give us, to give us the one year's holding, holding period return. So how do I get the holding period return? Ladies and gentlemen, the holding period return here will be the capital gain. The capital gain. So how do I get the capital gain? I will take in this case here P1 minus PO all over PO times what here? 100. That is the price at the end of year one minus the price of this share at the beginning of the year times zero divided by the price at the beginning of the year times 100, times 100. Therefore, ladies and gentlemen, this will be equal to P1 is 12, price at the end of year one, minus PO, price at the beginning of the year is eight. Divide this by what here, somebody? Divide this by eight. Whatever we get, uh, change to percentage, times 100, times 100. So ladies and gentlemen, if you do it that way, what will you get at the end of the day? So we have here, we have here 12 minus eight. So we have here 12 minus eight equals divide by eight, which gives us 0 0.5. So 0 0.5 times 100 is 50%. So it means that for the one year that I held this particular security, this particular share, I gained 50 what year, 50%. So the holding period return, the return year over the one year is 50%, is 50%. Thank you. Now, ladies and gentlemen, listen and listen to me very well. Look at the second illustration. Second illustration, second illustration, you are given the same share. You are given the same share. So this time round, ladies and gentlemen, they have told you that the buying price, the buying price equals what year? Equals eight. One year down the line, you sell this. The selling price is perhaps 10 bob, like that. But ladies and gentlemen, on top of this capital appreciation, we happen to be getting a dividend. So we have here, dividend, 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 dividend per share of one. So you get dividend at the end of the year. So, and then you are required here in exercise two, we are required here to determine the holding period return, the holding period return. So no problem, my holding period return will be equal to the price of the share at the end of year one, minus the price of the share at the beginning. So that gives me the capital appreciation or what we call the capital gain. We also had some other cash flow, a cash flow in the name of a dividend. So dividend receivable at the end of year one. So then automatically this gives us the total gain divided by our price at the beginning, the price, the buying price. And then whatever we shall get here, we'll come and multiply this with what year, 100 will come and multiply this with a hundred like that, a hundred. So ladies and gentlemen, come back here. The price of this share at the end of year one 
is 10. So this is 10 minus the price of the share at the beginning. Our buying price was eight. This one, gentlemen, plus the dividend we received at the end of year one, the dividend here is one, all over our initial price, which was eight. Whatever we shall get, we'll be able to multiply it with 100. So here you have to be careful. 10 minus 8 gives me what here? 2. 2 plus 1 will give me 3. So this will be 3 divided by what here? 3 divided by 8. 3 divided by 8, please get out your calculator and then you convert this to percentage. You convert this to percentage. If you do that, ladies and gentlemen, what will we get at the end of it? It will be 3 divided by 8 times 100 which will give us what figure? 37.5%. 37.5% is the answer like that. As a crown, ladies and gentlemen, on this concept of holding uh, period return, uh, listen and listen to me very well. If, for example, you are given here, you are given X size three. They tell you that the buying price, the buying price, the buying price, equals 10. We are given here selling price, selling price at the end of year one. At the end of year one is 13. Selling price at the end of year one is 13. Selling price at the end of year one is 13. And then you are told here to calculate the holding period return. The holding period return, ladies and gentlemen, what will we get here as our holding period return solution? Solution, I've just told you that the holding period return will be equal to the price at the end of year one minus the price at the beginning, all over the price at the beginning times what year 100. Now, I would want us to spread this PO. I would want us to spread this PO to the numerator terms. Our holding period return will be P1 over PO minus PO over PO times, of course, in this case here, 100. I'm driving at something very, very important here. There is an important concept that I would want you to understand here, that our holding period return can as well be obtained by taking price at the end of year one, divided by price at the beginning, minus, of course, PO over PO is one, so minus one. And then whatever that I will get, I'll multiply with what year? 100. So ladies and gentlemen, this at the end of the day will give us what figures here. So we have P1 of 13 divided by PO of 10. PO is the buying price, the initial price, minus one. So this will translate to 1.3 minus 13 over 10 is 1.3. So 1.3 minus one will give us 0 0.3, which at the end of the day will give us what we call what year? 30%, which at the end of the day will give us 30%, which will give us 30%. So I want to believe that you guys have enjoyed this particular session of a holding period return. On my next clip, I'll be looking at how to compute geometric means, arithmetic means, and harmonic means. So please, for those of you who want our video classes, CIFA video classes, simply call us. This is our number. We shall be able to give you these classes for 5,000. Eh? Kenya shillings, you'll be able to get access to all the videos covering the entire syllabus. Otherwise, thank you very much. Keep on sharing this particular video. God bless you.